the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, it's impossible to describe to you all the beautiful things that I got here in America. So I'm sending you some picture poster cards. First the one that looks like a rose holding an ice cream cone. That's the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> and next you got a picture of Empire State the Building in New York, which is 102 stories big. Mamma mia, I would have hate to live on that top of Florida. Comes a one cold day, you bang on the steam pipes, a janitor in the basement, I don't hear you, and you could have freeze it to that. <laughs> But it's a big and a beautiful building, uh, Mamma Mia. Next, you see a picture of Adela Planetarium in Chicago, and the bottom it says, Come in and see the stars for 50 cents. But a wonderful thing about America, Mamma Mia, is you ain't got a 50 cents, you can stay outside to look up in the sky, see the stars for nothing. <laughs> well, with all these apostate cards, you get an idea of America. Big, strong, beautiful. And I'm a hope for someday I'm going to do something for America to show how much I'm a love. Well, I'll finish my letter later because it's a time now to go to my night to school. America, I love you. You're like a papa to me. From ocean to All right, class, I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Horowitz? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Peekaboo. <laughs> Why, Mr. Basco, what got into you? Uh, well, uh, well, even I'm um, still got the mic called. Schultz is a home better with his and I can't come to school, but he's uh, making me promise I'm uh, going to peekaboo you when you call out his name. <laughs> well, stop being silly. Class, I'll have an announcement to make later, something of civic importance, but let's first get through with our spelling lesson. Now, Mr. Basco, we know a noun is singular if it signifies one, but what do we call a noun if it represents more than one of an object? It's not singular, it's, uh... Pleurisy. <laughs> what? Mr. Basco, pleurisy is a disease. Well, with the penicillin, who worries? <laughs> Luigi, I bet you Schultz told you to be the class caught up in his place today. Now, now, now then, P. Smile out, and it's all in the fun. Mr. Basco, that's not very funny. Now, Mr. Horowitz, you may tell us the rule about the plurals of words ending in F or F-E. They change to D-E-S. Like I have a knife, I have two knives. That's very good. Now, we have some nouns that don't follow the regular rules. I'll try you again, Mr. Basco. What is the plural of the word child? Twins. No, no, no. Triplets? No, no. Quadruplets? <laughs> Mr. Basco, I've never seen you acting so frivolous. Any more foolishness, and I'll send you home. Is that clear? Well, I'm a sorry, Miss Pudding. Oh, I was just trying to cheer up with the class while Schultz is sick. Well, stop it. It's bad enough that uh, uh, The plural of child is children. <laughs> Arsena, please, I have a respect to keep quiet while I'm getting the ball out. <laughs> I've got a right to hear what the Miss Pauling is hollering at me for. All right, Mr. Basco, I've had enough. I've never seen such behavior from you. And substituting for Mr. Schultz's silliness is the height of presumptuousness. You may leave the room. Well, Miss Pauling, please, 
Excuse me? Well, I, I don't... Uh, uh, Miss Spaulding, uh, maybe hear that civic announcement you promised us. Huh? Oh, yes. You might as well listen, Mr. Basco. It may interest you. Our school is making a drive to enlist volunteers for the civil defense program. How many of you would be interested in joining? Well, me, me, Miss Spaulding... I'm going to join. What, 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 I'm, what am I to do? Well, you tell people how to take care of themselves during the raid. Oh, and who's going to tell me? The city teaches you first, Mr. Basco. Miss Spalding, I'm, I'm going to show you I'm not the guy to hide presumptive. What do you said I had? And I'm going to join in a makeup for how bad I'm an actor. And I'm, and I'm going to start right now, Miss Spalding. Good. Where am I going? City Hall Civil Defense Section. Do you know where the city hall is, Mr. Basco? I'm never going to forget the Miss Balding. One hour after I'm going to come off for the boat, the Pasquale is I had to be in the city hall with the Rosa and a marriage license. <laughs> I understand very well, but Mr. Flanagan is busy. Yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm wait half hour already. I'm... If somebody has attacked America, I'm going to join the civil offense, and then I'm going to feel it terrible because I'm a promise. I know, I know. You promised your school teacher. Please uh, ask Mr. Hannigan. The name is Flanagan, and you'd better stop acting so jittery. Mr. Hannigan. The name is Flanagan. <laughs> Mr. Flanagan is very short tempered. Please, Miss. Uh, Look in it. Just the once in my hand. Look a little oh, bit the once in my hand. All right, I'm looking again. Although you just ball me out. Mr. Flanagan, are you ready yet? The gentleman All here... right, all right. For heaven's sakes, a man hasn't even got time to finish filing his nails. Show me. Mr. Flanagan will see you now, Mr. Basco. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss Lady, for looking in again. Hello. Hello, Mr. Finnegan. <laughs> Finnegan? I mean, Hannigan Flanagan. Hey, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very pretty name. Thank you. Please, I'm, I'm coming here to help out America in a case somebody is to come over to attack. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, tell me, Mr. Basco, were you born and bred in America? Well, I was born in Italy, but I'm eating the bread in America. <laughs> now, do you have citizen papers? I'm going to wait for two more years. You got uh, your papers, uh, Mr. Mr. Hooligan? <laughs> Hooligan? <laughs> Mama, maybe I'm better go out and I come in again, Mr. Finnegan. I'm here. The name I... is Flanagan. Flanagan. And for your information, Mr. Basco, I was born in Tallahassee. Oh. <laughs> Tallahassee? <laughs> Not Tallahassee, Tallahassee. Well, I see. I mean, I, I mean, I mean what, what age are you coming to this country, Mr. Tallahassee? <laughs> Mr. Basco, Tallahassee is in Florida. Now, let's stop wasting time and begin filling out your civil defense volunteer application form. All right, sir. <clears throat> your full name? Lloyd Basco. Middle initial? No, that's the fuller name. I mean, do you have a middle initial with that name? Uh, that's impossible because when I'm a writer, I'm a squeeze of Luigi and a Basco so close together, nothing is going to fit in between. <laughs> Just say no, Mr. Basco. No, Mr. Basco. <laughs> Wise guy. No, Mr. I dare you. Flanagan. Hmm. <laughs> now, home address? Only one and not the whole study street. Home. And over nine seven two nine four five. And if America's ever have a tacker, please, please don't be bashful, Mr. Flanagan. Call me right up anytime. I will, Mr. Basco. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. The name is Hannigan. <laughs> I mean, Finnegan. I mean, Mama, right. maybe you better go out and come in again. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, let's not mention names anymore. No. Now, as regards our defense, what type of work are you qualified to do? Well, if we was attacked, I'm got a too strong a feet, and I can run around and tell everybody. That wouldn't be of much help. Then, then how come Paul Revere has done it? <laughs> Paul Revere had a horse. Oh. Then uh, maybe you want the I'm sure to buy a horse. No. <laughs> no, that won't be necessary. Right. Now, let's finish this form, shall we? Now, how much time can you devote to civil defense work? When we get attacked, uh, that's when I'm going to get the time. Very smart. Nevertheless, what hours and days of the week will you be available for defense duties? Well, let me see now. I've got every morning my alarm clock is ring at 6 or 30. I'm going to get up 8 o'clock. Well, you... <laughs> hold, hold it. 
But if you get up at 8, why don't you set the alarm for 8? Oh, no, that's no good. Then I'm going to get up at 9.30 and that's too late. <laughs> Poor, go on. Well, then, then I'm going to work. I'm going to work until 6 o'clock. Then it's a supper till 7. Night to school is at 9. But after 9 o'clock, it's all right to have the attack. I'll oh. tell the arm. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Well, that completes your four, Mr. Basco. Uh, how you said my name? Yeah, you so I did. <laughs> uh, then then, then I'm, I'm civil defense working, huh? No, not, not yet, Mr. Basco. The chief deputy oh. of the division has to pass first on your fitness. Oh, and who's, who's this the chief of that? Ah, <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you? Then are you, you, you're going to pass me, Mr. Mr. Go on, say my name now. What do I don't tell me? Don't worry, I won't. It's a, it's a Mr. Flannel Gown. <laughs> it's not Flannel Gown, it's Flannel Gown, Mr. Barco. Barco, it's a... Barco. Barco. He's a Basco. Oh, is that so? Mamma mia, I would have been better off if we was a two different people. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that will help you get more enjoyment and satisfaction out of the things you do during a busy day. From time to time, especially when the hours seem to drag, chew a stick of refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. That little stick of good-tasting gum can really make a difference in how you feel. The lively, full-bodied Spearmint flavor freshens your mouth and sort of gives you a lift. The pleasant chewing breaks up the monotony, helps you go along feeling more cheerful and satisfied. Try it and see for yourself. Chew a few sticks of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum every day. You'll enjoy it, and it'll make things go smoother and pleasanter for you. Now, let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, I had the worst day in my life. I was acting so bad when I got to civil defense place that even though I'm going to help America, they must think I'm going to start to declare the war. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go out and I'm going to some civil defense handbook. And right away, I'm going to have to defend myself because while I was busy reading, Pasquale is coming. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, what are you reading there, little banana nose? <laughs> Let me see. Uh, pattern for survival. Pattern... Luigi, since when you took up a dressmaking? <laughs> no, Pasquale, this is about a civil defense. It's to tell you what you should do if the atom bomb is come. <laughs> As if I wouldn't know what to do without reading that book. What do, what do you do? Like every other normal person, I would have faint. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pasquale, you're wrong. You're supposed to fall down in front of some big, heavy thing and let that to protect you. You fall down in front of something heavy? Uh-huh. Luigi, marry my daughter, Rosa. You've got a lifetime of bombs. <laughs> Maybe it's funny to you, but this book, A Pattern for Survival, could save your life if you was a tourist. Oh, stop. I happen to be the quick thinking type. I would do the right thing just by using my brain. Oh? Well, Pasquale, if you knew Adam Abam was going to fall in the two minutes or blow up at the whole street, what would you do? Sell my store, quick. <laughs> Luigi, stop worrying so much about bombs. What's going to happen? Is it going to happen? Be like me. I'm a fatalist. <laughs> no, not to act like you, Pasquale. And today I'm going to try to do something to help. What do you try to do, little cabbage puss? Oh, no, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to laugh. Oh, no, no, Luigi. I'm not going to laugh. You promised me you, you, you're not going to laugh? You got my honest word. Now, what did you do? Well, I'm, I'm going went to join the civil defense to help defend America. <laughs> 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 That's not a nice you promised you wasn't going to laugh. Who's laughing? I just got a hysterical. <laughs> Pasquale, I would be the happiest fellow in Chicago if a civil defense was to accept me. What? You mean they turn you down? That's right. Well? 
Well, bye, Green Horn. Hello, Italy. <laughs> I told you, true. You finish. I bet you right this a minute. The FBI is reporting to their chief, for Herbert Hoover. <laughs> no, but why, why, Pasquale? Well, what am I did it wrong? Well, you did wrong. You acted like a stubborn maroon, that's a what. <laughs> only you know, only full of citizens is allowed to defend America. Only, only full? full yes. You only half a citizen. I don't think they'd even let you defend Rhode Island. <laughs> Pasquale, what you said before about the FBI, you... He, he was only joking. No, huh? no, Luigi. You liable to have a big uh, catastrophe. You know why? <laughs> because you're so stupid. Stupid, it? Yeah, you're stupid since you're in America. Everything you did was stupid with a capital of stew. <laughs> That's not the truth, Pasquale. No? Remember the time you walk in a drugstore, you ask for a toothbrush, and when the clerk said, How's uh, about a Dr. West a toothbrush? You said, If it's belonging to the doctor, how can I use it? Ah, <laughs> uh, you might as well know the worst, Luigi. In this country, you don't volunteer for nothing until you get drafted. <laughs> you know what's happening probably right now? Truman is a telephone in his ambassador in Italy to find out if you was a troublemaker there in your Boy Scout troop. <laughs> no, no, Pasquale, no, that, that cannot be true. No, that's not all, Luigi. When you went to offer your services and made a pest to yourself, you violated the big American unwritten law, the TBA. <laughs> TBA? What's that? Troublemaking, volunteering aliens. <laughs> Come on, me, Pascal, tell, me, tell, tell me quick what I should do. Well, when they come in to question you, there's only one thing you can do. What? Swallow a can of la choy, chow mein, and tell them you can only speak the Chinese. Catch <laughs> the telephone. Don't pick it up, Luigi. It sounds marked. No, no, Pascal, I'm... M maybe... Well, I, I'm a better hand. Go ahead. Uh, uh, hello? Mr. Basco, this is Mr. Flanagan, civil defense. Miss, who? Old flannel gown, remember? <laughs> mom, 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 mom. Hey, listen, Basco, I've been thinking about you. I think I was a little irritable the other day. Now, please, Mr. Flanagan, I, 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 I was a double irritable. <laughs> well, all right. Anyway, the reason I called is this. There is something you can do to help the country. You mean I'm, I, I'm not going to Italy? Basco, we don't send civil defense volunteers that far. Now, if you really want to help, here's what you can do. Go out, canvas your neighborhood, and get as many volunteers as you can for civil defense. Do you understand? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, Mr. Flamin, and I'm happy to, and, and I thank you so much. Hey, by the way, Basco, the city is having a practice air raid drill tonight. I suppose you heard about it on the radio? No. I'm blew out the tube last night to without the guy for it. <laughs> Good luck with your recruiting work, Vasco. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, Pasquale, they, they're not going to send me away. I'm going to help out by making the people to join up for with the civil defense. That's a waste of time. Waste of what the why? Why, Pascal? Luigi, nobody's going to join. The people today, they don't join or nothing, believe me. No, Pasquale, I, I think you're wrong because... Uh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get the 50 people from this neighborhood. Uh, I got a five bucks to say you don't get a warm. Pasquale, how are you going to talk like this? Every American is a crazy for his country, and they all want to join the civil defense. I'm going to get the 50, 100. <laughs> He's going to get 50, 100. Sounds like a one man, a draft board. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Pellegrino. Luigi, how you feel, huh? <laughs> How's the other thing for business, huh? Well, it's not the good, not the bad. Just the terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pellegrino, do you mind if, if, if I'm, I'm asking you something personally? Uh, I don't bother to ask you, Luigi. I'm not going to tell you. These are two front teeth that they not mine, but everything else that comes with the face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I want to ask you something about the, about your husband, and Joe. Huh? Uh, what about it, Joe? You think he would want to join the civil defense? The civil defense? That's uh, the civil defense is to protect America in case we get attacked. And I'm wonderful, Joe. He, he's the one to help out. Luigi, 
If Eisenhower wants Sir Joe, tell him he shouldn't be lazy, he should come and ask Sir Joe himself. <laughs> Hi, Luigi. Uh, take an apple off the counter. He just came in. Beautiful Jonathan's. Oh, thank you. Uh, Astra, I'm a... I'm a... I'm a... I'm a comer to ask you something. Five bucks enough. Uh, no, it's not the... Isn't that the money, Astra? I'm, I'm a comer to ask you to join the civil defense. Oh, yeah. I've been reading about that in the paper. Well, you could be a black of water in the first aid of water and that plane to watch you. Or maybe you could, uh, you could help out to the police and the fire department. Sure, sure. I'll be glad to help. Ah, it's a good. If they assign a fruit warden to watch my store 12 hours a day. Oh, oh you, you, you mean, you mean you're not going to join us? Oh, you? it's not that I don't want to. It's just I ain't got the time, Louis. Yeah, but how's about in the night the time I start for you to close up at the store? What, what do you do then? Well, Mrs. Ostro's a little nuts. She thinks I ought to spend at least one hour a day with her. Oh, <laughs> well... Uh... Well, a good night, Dustin. Yeah, yeah. You sure you won't have one of them Jonathans, Luigi? No, I'm going to find a Jonathan who's the one to help out. <laughs> Mamma mia, everybody I'm asking has got no time. Excuse me, mister, you got any time? Yeah, it's 8.30. No, no, I mean the time to help the civil defense. Oh, uh, very sorry, I'm busy. That's what they all say, they're busy. But I really am. Mamma mia, they all really am. <laughs> Excuse me, lady. Yes? I'm getting volunteers for civil offense. Maybe, maybe you want to be black or what, or something like that? Well, to be truthful, I'm, I'm busy. busy. Mr. Maybe you... Busy. You say you want a life. Busy. First aid. Busy. Well, you busy. want a country. Busy. Hey. Hey, what's that? Come on, mommy. That's the air raid, the practice air raid. Hey, the street lights went out. What are we supposed to do? Where, where, where do we go? I run in the doorway. Cover up, oh, mister. Oh, I'm oh, going to go up and I have my life. What's happening here? Where's everybody running? Stop the pushing the people. Wait, Stop the pushing. What are we doing? It's a practice air raid. Now everybody's going to go to Pasquale's store, lay down on the floor, cover up for your face. Oh, come, on, come, on. come on, come on. Hey, Pasquale, now you, you run in the kitchen and turn off for the gas, electric and the water. All right, all right, Luigi, have a go. Hey, you, put out the death of life. Then. Okay. Come on, mommy, look for Hazard. There's still the most people in the street. Then. Hey, you people, get out. Don't get off for the street. Then. All right, all right, all right. Now I'm going to run it back at the bus valley to that and I'm... Oh, I'm... I'm hopped in a cold from a running all over. All right, sir. Everybody all right in here? Yeah, all right. Okay, Luigi, electric and the water is a turn off. Now, it's about the gas, Pasquale. Turn that off. But, well, Luigi, that's going to ruin all of my meatballs. Pasquale, do like I'm going to tell you. Okay, okay. Quiet, quiet. Everybody, shut up. Quiet. That's all right. Now down on your stomachs, so cover up your face and your arms. Now I'm going to turn on the battery radio. Lockwood, make sure everybody is off the streets and make sure your airplane spotters are at their posts. That is all. Airplane, airplane spotters. Mamma mia, I got nobody to help me out with that. I'm better than up on the roof and look at myself. <laughs> There's a call in the dock on the roof. What is so fine no airplanes? Now, yeah, what's that up there? Mamma mia, it's looking like a real zeppelin. And it's coming closer to me. It's a getting closer. Luigi, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa, what are you doing up on the roof? Go on, go down the stairs. Help us there. I should help you look for airplanes. No, Rosa, don't, don't, don't come so close. Look, you're going to trip on that the wire. Look out, Rosa. Look out, Rosa. Rosa, get up. <laughs> you fell on me. <laughs> now, don't try to talk, Luigi. 
Doctor says you've got to lay still until those are four broken ribs to heal up. Uh, Luigi, how you feel, huh? Well, not so good, Mr. Pellegrini. Oh, it's nothing. My daughter's got a crush on him, that's all. <laughs> Luigi, when my Joe was here, what you did last night is you went down to join the civil defense. I did that. That's wonderful. Yeah. He's uh, got to learn first aid with the bandages. Uh, and if he gets good enough, well, who knows? And maybe I'm uh, going to let him get up every night to change it to twins. Hey, look, it looks like we've got more customers. Then, 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 how is the patient? Hi, Luigi. Hi, Stran. Hello, Stran. Luigi, 18 people in the neighborhood signed up for civil defense work, including yours truly. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I, I was right behind your friend Horowitz. You know, I got to figuring last night, Luigi, after that air raid drill, if nobody volunteers and the emergency comes up, we'll all be running around like a pack of wild animals. Sure, it's going to be like crossing a Michigan Boulevard against the lights. <laughs> Here comes somebody. Good evening, folks. Oh, Mr. Flanagan. The name is... Oh. <laughs> How are you, Vasco? Mamma mia, what... Why are you coming to see me? I'm, 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 I'm a dead man. Be something wrong last night. Look, Mr. Flanagan, what Luigi did last night was a very good, even though he ain't was efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was, was great. Well, of great. Oh, Mr. Fine. Basco, I've heard all about the work you did, and I've come to swear you in your new position. A new position? Hmm? Well, what am I going to be? I plan to spot and watch what I carry first. What, what am I going to be? Mr. Basco, you're going to be the block captain. Block captain? Mamma mia, how wonderful. Now, officially, it's called the Block Warden. Now, if you're ready, repeat this oath of allegiance after me. I do solemnly swear... I do solemnly swear... That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States... That I will defend and support the Constitution of the United States... That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservations... That I take this obligation free without any mental... Uh... Reservation. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties upon, upon, upon which I'm, I'm about to enter. Good. Please wait, Mr. Flanagan. Yes. Before you finish, I've got to ask you one thing. Well, sure. What is it? Uh, make my roses say the same thing and pronounce them a man and a wife. <laughs> Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an ideal treat to enjoy after meals. Chew a stick after your next meal and see how that lively spearmint flavor freshens your mouth. It sweetens your breath, too. And the chewing, as you know, aids your digestion. Chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum after meals has become a real American custom because millions of folks know that a stick of good gum tops off the meal just right. In fact, a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint tastes good any time, and you can enjoy it just about anywhere. So keep a package of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint gum handy all the time. Enjoy it after meals, between meals, whenever you want a refreshing treat. Get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint next time you're at the store. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this same time when Luigi Vasco writes another letter to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Chip as Miss Spaulding, Ken Peters as Olson, Hal March as Mr. Flanagan, and Sarah Berner as Mrs. Pellegrino. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Charles Lyon. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> <laughs>